Hello insiders! This week we thought we'd do a, a deep dive. Part of the discussion around the YouTube Partner Program, we're actually putting together a dedicated video about the application process. So that's not this video. This video is more around YouTube as a platform for creators in the context of the YPP program. We've made a ton of progress getting through the vast majority of applications, but we also realize that there are still a number of people waiting, uh, people who required secondary reviews. As a recap, when we changed the criteria for YPP to 4,000 watch hours and 1,000 subs, and then we had the processing delays, people were saying, wow, you know, if I'm not in YPP, maybe there's not that much value in uploading to YouTube. And so we thought we'd just kind of share our perspective on other things that we're doing to invest creator kind of opportunities on the platform. Let me just kind of go over some of them. Would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you're not in YPP yet, um, there are still some really interesting kind of benefits that maybe sometimes even we take for granted uh, working here at YouTube. Um, the first one, uh, from a creator point of view, is the reach of the audience. We've hit 1.9 billion monthly logged in viewers. Great opportunity for creators to reach a global audience. A lot of those users will be searching for content. So it's not just a browsing experience, it's not just a subscribe experience, but it's also a great opportunity for creators to get discovered. Another thing that we've been investing in is the community tab. That's still rolling out. One of the cool features is you can actually include in your community post a video from other creators, but it's a great way to kind of put a little commentary and text and then have the other person's video uh, underneath and can promote that to your subscribers. It's a great way for you to kind of stay engaged with your audience, but also to help the creator of that video um, get more awareness as well. The other thing that we found is that many, many creators get a lot of views and viewers from watch next and home suggestions. So this is, we think, another thing that uh, really helps the creator ecosystem in the long run. Things that we're also doing uh, is investing in YTA. One specific example for YouTube analytics in the YouTube Studio Beta is what we call the funnel report, where we show impressions, click-through rate, uh, how many of the impressions came from Watch Next and Home, just to help creators understand like the overall flow of how a visitor reaches their video. So these are all examples of things that we're doing to help creators reach a big audience. Once you have that large audience, even in a world where, let's say, you're still waiting for a YPP decision, uh, we know that a lot of creators are able to earn significant revenue off of YouTube based on their YouTube audience. The other thing that, that is maybe kind of overlooked sometimes is not just the audience, but sort of the plumbing and infrastructure to kind of make all of this happen. So as many of you know, every minute there's 400 hours of new video uploaded to YouTube. You know, obviously we still invest in storing and serving those videos, all of them, and we have every motivation to monetize as many of them as we can. And so we're aligned there, but we still uh, invest in, in having that uh, ability to, to express yourself and, and uh, have your content available to the world, irrespective of whether um, it can be uh, monetized through the YPP program. The other thing that we invest a lot in is making sure that when a video is uploaded to YouTube, it's available globally um, with very, very small latency, like loads really fast. The other thing that may not be as obvious is investing in making sure that we are integrated into many different kind of distribution clients. So we've obviously invested a lot in the YouTube living room experience, uh, integration with smart TVs. We transcode every video into dozens of different formats and sizes. And that's all to make sure that when you upload your content to YouTube, it is as globally accessible as possible. Um, we also do a lot around the captioning investment and crowd captioning, um, speech to text auto captioning, um, more and more ways that uh, try to get your, your voice heard. Um, 
Another thing that uh, you probably heard in the past is our investments in making sure the platform is safe. So we have uh, been growing our team to uh, a goal of 10,000 that are focused on making sure uh, the content on YouTube is appropriate. And you may be thinking, well, how does that help me? You know, my, my content is fine. Uh, you know, if there's a lot of inappropriate content on the platform, it hurts everybody. You know, it's, it turns off viewers, it's not good for advertisers, it's, it's not right. Um, so we obviously invest in that. Same thing with copyright. Uh, in order to make sure that this platform remains, you know, accessible and available to as many creators as possible, we also need to make sure that the content and intellectual property rights of um, IP holders are respected and, and protected, including endemic creators, as evidenced through um, the copyright protection feature that we started rolling out for individual channels in case other channels are using your content so you can be notified and, uh, and reach out to those channels. The other thing I'll talk about is creator resources. So there's the Creator Academy channel, our Fan Fest events, uh, we do our major sponsor of VidCon every year. Um, there's the uh, YouTube uh, um, Play Button Awards program, and you know even this little channel, Creator Insider, uh, are all examples we hope of our commitment to helping this ecosystem thrive and grow and be successful. Another thing that might be behind the scenes or not you know obvious is the sales force. So we have thousands of people who work at Google on the ad side every day meeting with businesses and most of those proposals uh, include a YouTube component uh, and so that's a great way for you to focus on creating great content and know that you know we're reaching out to all the top brands all the top advertisers to make sure that their marketing budget um, considers uh, YouTube as a great opportunity. Next, I, I thought I'd just do a little bit of a back of the envelope exercise to try and figure out like, oh, if I didn't upload to YouTube, you know, what would it cost to, to do it myself? I think the actual biggest thing that, that I encountered was the value of promotion. So we actually did an experiment for Creator Insider where we ran ads uh, on AdWords, uh, search ads and ads around um, on YouTube, in fact, to promote Creator Insider. And I think we spent like $1,000 for that campaign. And we got a lot of views and, uh, and a decent number of subscribers. But it was a fraction of what we were getting from um, Watch Next and Homepage. And so if you actually calculate the value of that promotion from uh, Watch Next and the Homepage, uh, it really adds up to at least hundreds of dollars a year. In our case, probably tens of thousands of dollars a year. And so that was, um, that's just like one example of to try and quantify the, the value of the free services that, uh, that, that a lot of creators get from YouTube. To be fair and to keep it real, if you're producing great quality content that is brand appropriate, that meets our terms of service, that meets our community guidelines, and that content is unique and authentic and original, our incentives are aligned. Uh, YouTube wants as many creators to be monetizing as possible. Um, it's certainly good for us as a business, um, but we also have to do it in a responsible way, and we also have to do that in a way that allows us to sustain the trust and investment from advertisers and viewers, and just to make sure the platform is, is safe and, and uh, healthy for the long run. The last thing I'll talk about is within our team, and I work in the creator team, our goal is the number of creators um, earning uh, a material amount of, of money on YouTube. So we are measured on that number going up as much as possible. And the encouraging thing is every year we look at these graduation rates between tiers of creators like Creators are making you know, maybe just a modest amount of money and then a little bit more and a little bit more. And what we see is every year, the size of those groups is growing quite healthily. And the number of people moving from one tier to the next is also growing healthily. So ecosystem-wide, we think we're um, moving in the right direction and things are going well. 
However, on a case-by-case -case basis, um, you know, there's probably folks that we can do a better job with, and, and that's the focus of, of the organization now, is to say, okay, great, overall the ecosystem is doing well. How do we make sure that um, every creator that is trying really hard, that, that is uh, adding a lot of valuable content that's unique and consistent with our guidelines, how do we make sure they're succeeding, all of them, you know, that are meeting those guidelines? And uh, with your help, hopefully we'll get there. Um, please leave feedback in the comments below. And uh, in the meantime, keep it real.